By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have some more old school magic for you from the Knights of Thorn, a tournament held in Deventer, the Netherlands. And this is still the Swiss rounds. I believe it's round number three. And we're going to look at a mono black deck. And this is a really sweet looking deck because it's all beta. So I've called it beta black. As far as I can tell, I have to make the side note here because I don't have any deck pictures. But what I could see when I was looking at the match um, is that it, it seems to be all beta. So I'm very enthusiastic about this deck because it just looks incredibly stunning. And it is taking on a dead guy, Ill Brew, so that means the black-white deck. And the reason that uh, I haven't called it dead guy ill in the description is that YouTube doesn't really like the words dead and guy like put together. So they don't really like it when you talk about a dead guy. So to kind of, you know, help YouTube, I've decided to just call it uh, black-white mid-range. So these two decks are... Uh, taking it on against each other. Now, I'm first going to do a little bit of deck deck based on my knowledge of both of these decks, and then I'm going to show you the actual match. Now, if you wanna go straight to the match itself, you can check the description below, and there you will find a timestamp. Click on a timestamp, it'll take you to game one. It's as simple as that. Uh, for me, if you, if you stick around, I'm now going to discuss both of these decks by looking at a few key cards. First deck that I would like to look at is the mono black deck, or in other words, the beta black deck. I mean, and when I was looking, uh, what I always do is prior to the matches, I kind of look at the video footage to kind of see, okay, what kind of decks are playing here against each other to kind of get a feel of the of the matchup. And uh, what I noticed is that, hey, wait a minute, the mono black player, everything is black bordered. Everything seems to be beta. And that means that, um, you know, you you see some very interesting cards that you normally don't see in a mono black build. For instance, Throne of Bone. This guy is playing Throne of Bone. I love the art of Throne of Bone. But, I mean, it's pretty useless. Like all those, you know, Ivory Cup, Iron Star, all those, that whole series is pretty useful. Uh, useless, sorry. But it's beautiful. Throne of Bone, the art is amazing. So thank you for playing this card, Epic. He's also playing a Howl from Beyond, which is really cool. Anime Dead, with which I kind of think more people that play black should just play it standard. It's such a good card. Uh, he's also playing Senior Vampire, Royal Assassin, Hypnotic Spectre. I believe I also saw a Force Field. So he's really made some interesting choices. So it's not your typical black deck. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to hold up against um, the white, black, the dead guy, ill opponent. So let's take a look at some of the key cards in that deck. And the beta black deck is going to take on dead guy ale. And I think what's going to be interesting with this matchup is to see, okay, you've got a mono deck, so mono black in this case, that means a lot of consistency, but you're also missing certain aspects because you're only playing with one color. And that's usually the reason why people play with two colors or three colors, because you're just adding extra ability into the mix. And especially when you're talking about you're playing with black and then all of a sudden you're adding white. And why would you add white? Well, there are two cards, and that's enough reason to add white into any deck, and that is Swords to Plowsiers and Disenchant. So play with four of both. I don't know if this player also adds a balance. Personally, I would always add a balance too, if I decide to add white. Um, but I mean, Swords to Plowsiers and Disenchant is just top, top removal in old school magic. It's just, it's the bomb, it's the bomb. You see a lot of, for instance, mono black decks, uh, deciding to play a disc because they have, you know, that really is a strong removal spell, but it's slow, it's not guaranteed, it comes into play tapped, stuff can happen. But here, you know, for disenchants, especially in a form where everyone's playing with the Chaos Orb, you know, it can take care of, of that. Four Swords, remove it from the game, you cannot use your anime dead. It's, it, it takes care of business, and that's what these white spells do. So it's, it's really curious to see, is the consistency of black going to win or is it the flexibility of dead guy ale playing with two colors so i think that's kind of what this matchup is about personally i think the dead, dead guy ale deck is is a slight favorite because of those strong white removal spells you know but we'll see we'll see how it's going to happen so let's go to game one and see how this is going to uh, end up how it's going to pin out game number one is about to start we have the beta black mage sitting on the left 
and the dead guy ill player is sitting on the right and there's a swamp turn one from both players and let's see another one And there is a scrubland tapping two, and there is a sinkhole. Both players are probably playing with a sinkhole. Dark Ritual into a Hypnotic Spectre. Unfortunately, we have a lot of glare again. And uh, one of the issues I had with this venue is that they changed the lighting during the tournament. Because what I usually do, I set up my gear and I play in the tournament it, myself. You know, I love old school. I'm, I'm playing, you know, <laughs> but I'm streaming and recording at the same time. And then, you know, they change the lighting a little bit. So unfortunately, then you have glare on the cards. Uh, but I can tell you it is a hypnotic specter there on the Battle for the Tutu Flyer. And um, we saw the other player, player playing a demonic tutor, probably looking up a swords. At least that is what I would do. And having that scrubland untapped attack. There it is. There's the swords to Plowsiers. That's kind of the obvious choice. Maybe he had it in hand. That's also a possibility. And look at that, wow, tapping five mana. And this is actually a really nice black bordered Sengir Vampire. It's impossible to, to, to see now looking at the glare, but I put it in slow-mo. Oh, and there's a Mind Twist one very quickly. Look at that, so he's losing a force field. I couldn't see the other card. There's a lot happening right now. But it looks like he's able to swing in now with that Sengir Vampire. And there you can see it for a moment. And there's another Swords to Plows here. It's so that means even more life. I think they're now going to look for an extra dice. There it is. 26 life, but you don't want to have life. You want to deal damage and you want to have cards in hand. And now he's playing a Sengir Vampire of his own. And that means trouble here for the Mono Black player. I think that uh, Mind Twist, like in so many games, just has a brutal effect. Even more creatures coming onto the board now. A Hypnotic Spectre. There a tap for three. I'm not sure what creature this is. Attacking now, deciding not to block. It can be a Hypnotic Spectre, but it can also be a Royal Assassin, for instance, because he's also playing Royals. The glare is very annoying. And we see another creature by the Dead Guy Ill player, a Suchi. And there is an attack. So it was a Hypnotic Spectre, and he's deciding to trade. And there it is, the Throne of Bone. Such a cool card, and that means that he can gain life for every black card that comes in the game. It's not really going to help him in this position here. It's now on 10 life. And this is a Royal Assassin, playing a Royal, adding a life, get, going to 11. Again, a Swords. I mean, he is very lucky with the Swords to Plowsiers. I mean, three Swords to Plowsiers being played out so far. It's really hard to play to play against. And that's it. That's game. So this was not really a game. This game number one. Luckily, we have game number two. And hopefully, the black player can get some revenge. So let's let these players sideboard. And we'll see, we'll see them in game number two. Game number two. And the beta black player is on the play, sitting on the left. And he's got to win this one. Great start here. Dark Ritual into a Hypnotic Spectre. Classic opening. And if there's no swords here, then maybe... He can actually do something with that hippie. And there is a sinkhole, and again, that sorts to Plowsiers. That is unfortunate, but a well placed sinkhole, I think, on a dual land. And there is a swamp into a soul ring. And let's see her playing a black knight for two. I haven't seen a Mishra's factory, by the way, on the battlefield so far. Scrubland tapping for four, Hypnotic Spectre. Remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish old school, so it has no effect having one unspent mana. Swamp number four. And, ooh, there's an Unholy Strength. I love these cards, it's so cool to see. So that means it's now a 4-3 for a striker, but no way to solve to deal with the Hippie. So he's losing an anime dead there. So despite the good start by the beta black player, it looks like the dead guy ill deck is really doing well here. And there's a royal assassin, so that could be that could be pretty good here if it can survive. Hopefully, the dead guy ill player cannot find another source because we already saw 
Interesting, there's a block. He's actually making the mistake, and this is nice. The beta black player is saying, you know what, you can keep your uh, factory. I don't think I would have done that, in all honesty. I mean, I'm a nice guy, but I also want to win, and I, I feel this is just a fair mistake on his side. And there's a drain life on the Royal Assassin. Taking a damage from his city. Tapping three. Some cards falling off here. Oh, this is interesting. Um, it's a circle of protection. It's white, it's from Legends. And you can prevent damage from a black source and from a red source, I believe. Or an artifact source, I kind of forgot. So if you know, let me know in the comments below. Um, in, in this case, what's important in this matchup, as we see, there are some problems here with the recording, by the way. Um, a lot of glitching, but what's important in this matchup to realize is that it's a circle protection for black, basically. But I believe you have to pay a white and uh, colorless. There's an attack for four here. So the beta black player is going to 14. It's not looking good. There's a juggernaut. A beautiful beta juggernaut, so that can be useful. Passing turn because attacking with the Black Knight doesn't make any sense. Attacking again there with the Flyer. Playing the Throne of Bone. Attacking with both. Paying two to prevent the damage. Oh, and there's another Swords to Plows here. Does not mean that he's taking five life? So he's going back to 17. And let's see what he can do. Paying two here, two in the black. There's a Demonic Tutor. Ooh, and it looks like things are getting worse. And interesting to see here that the beta black player is not tapping to gain a life from the Throne of Bone. Or did I miss something? Oh, he is doing it now. Going to 18. Life is basically time. So, you know, life gain can be very important because it can buy you time. Going to 14 now. Paying four mana, and I can't really see what that is. Super annoying, all this glare. It doesn't look like, is it a creature? I think it's a creature. If it's a black creature, the circle protection can still deal with it. Another attack here is going to 12. And that's, of course, is a problem when you're playing with a single color. Ah, I believe I know what it is, because he's paying one. It looks like this is a Pestilence. Interesting, a sword to Plows here doesn't work, because the Black Knight has protection from white. Interesting to see these plays here. It's a little confusing. I believe he has a Pestilence now. And if he pays two, that means that the Hippie dies. That's not a bad idea. That's exactly what he does here. And it's also a great way of killing his opponent. So, wow, this Pestilence is maybe exactly what the beta black player needs. There seems to be some discussion, but this is completely legit what he does here. Beta black player is on five life. If he can untap, he can actually win this one, and we're going to a third game. There is a Sengir Vampire that's not going to save him. And again, he's putting two more damage through just to be on the safe side. And he's trying to prevent the damage, of course. And that's it. That's game because he can put so much damage through his Pestilence. Victory by Pestilence. Very nice, very cool. It, it, it's, it is a little bit hard to follow, also for me, uh, because of the glare. But that was a Pestilence, and Pestilence is, I think, really, really underestimated and should be included in more black builds. That's my humble opinion. Beautiful card, strong card, and um, he's won this second game. So we're going to game number three. I didn't see that uh, happening, so exciting here. So let's give these players some time and we'll catch up with them in game number three. 
Game number three, and uh, it is the dead guy ill player who gets to start. And it's interesting to see, by the way, in this matchup, we haven't seen a single disenchant, so maybe the dead guy ill player isn't playing disenchant. I assumed that he does because he's playing with white. Maybe he just didn't pull one yet. That's also, but he is really finding those sorts of plows here. Oh, and look at this. It looks like the black player has to take a mulligan here. We're doing the London mulligan rule so he can put one here in the bottom of his library. I see a lot of swamps in his hand. He is keeping it. That means he's starting with six, gets to draw number seven. Both of them playing a basic swamp here. Game number three, the decisive game. There is a scrubland and again a sinkhole. And those sinkholes, they hurt the most early game when you're playing against a mono player. If you find a sinkhole late game, it's not as useful anymore. And there we see a library of Alexandria. Again, that circle of protection. And this looks like a black knight. Tapping four here. There's a drain life for two. And it's nice to see that this deck, actually, the, the Dead Guy Ill deck has a lot of removal now because he is playing and Drain Life and he's playing Storch to Plowsiers. In the meanwhile, we see, I believe, a Hypnotic Spectre here on the side of the beta black player. But of course, there is that circle of protection. So attacking really isn't going to do much. Ooh, interesting here, Dark Ritual. And what is he playing? It's Again, it's hard to see. It's a, oh, that's cool. Is this a Demonic Hordes? I believe he's playing a Demonic Hordes. Oh, that's fantastic. If that is a Demonic Hordes, I believe it is. Oh, this glare is so annoying. Go away, glare. I want to see if it's a Demonic Hordes. No, not a Swords. Not a Demonic Hordes. Don't do it. Don't do it. And look, there's an extra dice out of the screen. I believe that was a demonic hordes that he that, that he had on the battlefield. And what a shame. Ah, swords to plows here. It's just too good. Anyway, there's a Sengir by the dead guy ill player. And there is, I believe that's a royal assassin. Another card in the spotlight. And interesting to see, by the way, that the dead guy ill player is really just ignoring his uh, library of Alexandria, it seems, choosing to put pressure on it, on it instead on the game. In a way that makes sense, because he's ahead. And you can see this game really shows how incredibly strong a Swords to Plows here is. Can you imagine this matchup if the dead guy ill player didn't have a play set of Swords to Plows here? then this would have been a completely different different matchup. Completely different. And again, he's tapping a lot, playing a Drain Life, taking care of the Hypnotic Spectre. Tapping one, is this a Will-O-The-Wisp? I believe it is. Really nice to see a beta Will-O-The-Wisp. It's really a beautiful deck. Another Sangir Vampire. And what is that? I don't know. If you know, please leave a comment if you can tell me what that card is. Attacking now so he can block with the Willow. Ah, that's an Icy Manipulator. I believe it is. Yeah, yeah I can see it now. So he's tapping one and taking four damage. And that means that he can kind of now control the board with that Will of the Wisp and the Icy Manipulator. And now we can see it more clearly that it is an Icy Manipulator. End of turn, tapping the City of Brass. Oh, that's nice. Uh, what's that card again? Oh, it's the card with the two eyes and you can look at somebody's hand and kind of take it over and play a card from it. Unfortunately, his opponent only has land cards in hand, so that means he cannot choose. So that's very unfortunate. It's a beautiful card, by the way. And it's not reprinted. I know that. I just, I, I cannot come up with the name right now. Please leave a comment if you know the name of this card. 
A great card. Tapping four here, playing another Pestilence. And Pestilence already won in one game. Can it win him another game? At least it can completely wipe the board clean. And that's not even a bad option. Tapping two here, there's a disenchant. So I was wondering before if this deck had any disenchants. It does. He just couldn't find them. And now he's attacking full swing, six damage, going to 12 here. And I think that Pestilence is maybe the thing that can keep him going. The difficult thing about Pestilence is, is that you deal one damage at a time. Oh, interesting here. Activating Pestilence already. Okay, look, and what we see here is actually a wrong play. Because what happens is every time you activate, you pay a Swamp, everything gets a damage. So you have to regenerate Will-O-The-Wisp. Then pay a Swamp again. Everybody gets a damage. You have to regenerate Will-O-The-Wisp again. You cannot play it like this where you only regenerate it once, unfortunately. But hey, it's an honest mistake. These things happen. And we see that Willow's still on the board. And... Ooh, this is nice. An unholy strength on the Will of the Wisp. I wonder if he's also playing with Bat Moons. And the beta black player with his beautiful deck is on 8. And I definitely think that the Dead Guy Ill player is a strong favorite here because of that circle of protection. Attacking is not going to help him. So we're kind of at a standstill here. I wonder how this is going to end up. There's another creature, in this case the Hypnotic Spectre. And that's basically it for now. He's attacking with two, interesting. Preventing the damage. And that's all that he's doing, just passing turn. Maybe just wanted to see, you know, what's gonna happen when I attack. What is he going to do? And look at that, he now is an active library of Alexandria. So he gets to draw two cards as well. So I, I kind of feel like when the Dead Gael player finds a disenchant, that this game is going to be over fast. Because you can also use the swords to really deal with the Will of the Wisp. And there we see him draw a second card because of that library. And the, th the thing that could give him the victory is maybe building up a really big drain life. Oh, but then again, he can prevent the damage of the drain life. Oh, look at this, playing an anime dead. And he's bringing back his Sengir Vampire. But the problem is that circle of protection. He needs a way to deal with that circle. But it looks like it's not going to happen. And I wonder what the Dead Guy Ill player is drawing, because he's drawing two cards a turn. But he's not really finding anything, it seems. And here's playing a Black Knight, again attacking with everything. That means he's taking one damage from his own City of Brass. So finally he's getting some damage in. Drawing an extra card again from the library. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of developing into a very interesting game, this kind of standstill because of the Pestilence and the Circle of Protection. And I wonder, he's going to attack again with everything. Now remember, he has to pay two mana per creature instead of one with this specific Circle of Protection. And he is taking some damage from his own City of Brasses. And there's another Hypnotic Spectre. So the board is really, really filling up. And I wonder if he plays with a balance, the Dead Guy Ill player. And he's playing a Demonic Tutor. Ay, ay, ay. If he plays with a balance, maybe he's going to look it up now. 
or maybe he's going to look up a disenchant to take care of the pestilence and then play out his hand because his hand must be full with all sorts of stuff we can only guess at this point oh and there's the balance <laughs> yeah it was waiting for the balance on the other hand, I mean, he is emptying his own hand now, the Library of Alexandria player. And because there are no creatures in the game, the Pestilence will be removed at the end of turn. But that happens at the end of turn. So if he plays a creature now, then he's keeping the Pestilence alive. So I assume that that guy, player, will not be playing a creature. But who knows? And he can keep two cards because the beta black player has two cards in hand still. Interesting, he's deciding to just put four damage through. So he's going on two and he is on six. And it looks like that's the game. <laughs> he's shaking his hand. He's saying, okay, man, you've won. Uh, because of that, ah, he couldn't do anything against the Mishra's factory, of course. Wow, interesting. So maybe activating that Pestilence for four there at the end wasn't the best decision to make. I don't know. It looked really difficult in general for the beta black player to win with that circle of protection on the battlefield. But thank you very much, gentlemen, for this very entertaining match. It was fun to look at. Very interesting to see both these decks and the choices that people make. Um, very interesting. And that beta black deck is just beautiful. Look at that. Look at those cards. I mean, that's just great. I'm, I'm a little bit jealous. There's ah, oh, there's even a nightmare there. Look at that. Oh, that would have been great to see a nightmare on the board. I always like Bat Moon, by the way, with Will o' the Wisp. I think there's some really nice synergy there. So uh, very, very cool games. Um, if you'd like to see more old school magic, you can click on the videos that are appearing right now on the screen. And if you want to see more of the Knights of Thorn, I do have a playlist. So you can go to the playlist to see some more games of the previous rounds. I will also be posting more of this tournament uh, this week and the upcoming weeks for now. Thank you for watching and see you next time at Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. <laughs>